Hello everybody, this is Tekka, and in this video what I'm going to be doing is installing Arco Linux, giving you my first impressions and just kind of running down everything I'm noticing about this Linux distribution. Uh, Arco Linux is a Arch-based distribution, meaning it's a rolling release structure, has the Arch user repositories, uses Pac-Man as the package manager, everything I love about Manjaro, which is also Arch-based, but supposedly I've been hearing and people have been suggesting to me to try it out and it might be a better option than Manjaro. I really like Manjaro, so it would take a lot for me to sway towards something else, but we're gonna go ahead and check it out. And the first thing we can check out is their website. This is arcolinux.com. They also have a arcolinux.info where you could get even more information than what is provided on their .com website. Uh, here, it's first going to go over the uh, learning phases, which basically they have different uh, disk images for every phase. Uh, most people are just going to go ahead and let's go under download. And most people are just going to go with the Arco Linux first one right here. You have DNB. If you go down here, it kind of explains what the difference is. So like um, the Arco Linux is looking for a full ISO with uh, the desktop environments, applications, everything you're going to need. Uh, if you go with Arco Linux D, it's a very minimal ISO in which you're going to have to do a lot of the work yourself and it goes on from there. For somebody like me, I don't like to um, spend too much time doing the setup. I like to do a lot of things after the fact. So I'm going to be going with this Arco Linux ISO here. Uh, if you're looking into this, I do recommend you check out this uh, Start Here tab and go to the Choose Project, which is kind of what I touched on right there. Uh, you have their core information here, so just about everything you're going to need to know. They have a YouTube library with a vast amount of information, so if you really, really want to deep dive into this, I'll leave a link to that down below. Oh, well, I'll leave a link to this page uh, down below so you could go ahead and check that out. Oh, I accidentally went to it. That's perfect, though. This guy right here, he is the man. He has everything you need to know. But um, So after this video, go ahead and check that out. Uh, we're going to be diving into VirtualBox here. So let's start off by going to my other monitor. Let's pop open VirtualBox. And then let's pop open my file manager just so I can make sure it is in here. We have Arco Linux right there. So let's create a new Arco Linux. Watch it pulls Linux Arch. That is fine because that's basically what it is. Uh, let's give it a good amount. Let's just go with 8 gigabytes of RAM to go ahead and test it out. Make a virtual disk. Uh, let's give it 64 should suffice. So we are going to start it. All right, so the ISO went ahead and booted up here. Um, I'm gonna need to change this resolution. So first thing I'm noticing right off the bat, I'm right clicking and there is quite a few different options here. Uh, it looks like it's running XFCE. So if I go over here to system, I could just probably search display. Configure display settings, and then let's put this to 1360. Go ahead and apply that. Keep this configuration, and now you all should be able to see that a little bit better. So this is the welcome screen right here. Um, we advise you to clean your computer with Gparted, um, and this is probably the installer here. Update miners. So there's a lot of, well, not a lot, but there's quite a few things you could do here. Uh, live user, no password, has all their social links, um, oh, has a little information, a couple warnings, so it gives you some conflicts, which will might come up later. Um, if we go under Arco Linux here, let's see what they have installed real quick before I go ahead and run through the installation process. So the items they have favorited by default, we have the welcome screen, which is open right there. We have a tweak tool, which I'll actually go ahead and take a look at that when I install it. Uh, yeah, Firefox, uh, File Manager, Terminal, Preferred Applications. Let's just go ahead and open this up. Um, web, oh, okay, so it's setting your defaults basically. Okay, that makes sense. Um, if we go under Accessories, they have Archive, uh, Better Lock Screen, the tweak tool again. Comes with Atom, that's a nice touch. Uh, has Font Managers, Catfish, the uh, installer right here, uh, Convantum, so they have that by default. They have Plank by, they have a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, sensor Viewer, I did a whole video on basically how to get this and uh, check your 
uh, CPU and GPU thermals and all that. So that's nice that they have that installed as an application right out of the gate. A couple different file managers, a uh, task manager. So that's just the um, uh, typical one you'd expect. Uh, what else do they got? They got a lot going on here. Uh, USB image writer. Um, under development, they have Atom. They got Genie, Get Ahead, Meld, and Sublime Text. That's cool they included Sublime Text. That's uh, one of the text editors I go ahead and recommend for a lot of people. I've been preferring either Kate, which comes by default with KDE. Note, Notepad QQ is another really, really good one. Under graphics, they have GIMP, which is a daily use for me. They also have Inkscape, so it's cool that they include both of those. And a couple others, Internet, Chromium, Firefox, Vivality, I think, and um, Q BitTorrent. So pretty good lineup here. I would definitely be using uh, Firefox and QTorrent or Q BitTorrent. Multimedia, they have Peak, which some of these I'm not sure what they are. Peak, uh, Record Animated GIFs. It's cool they have the little descriptions here. Pretty sure that's an XFCE thing. Uh, video Capture, I just use OBS. Uh, VLC is decent. Uh, over time, I'm learning VLC is um, kind of bloated and unnecessary if you're using it purely to watch videos, but that's a subject for a later video. And um, we have a CDD, uh, CD DVD burner. Like this one right here, a video viewer, that's probably more than enough uh, compared to VLC. Uh, Office, they do not include a Office suite, so we have dictionary and document viewer. Settings, I'm not going to go through all this, but it does look like they have Adblock built in, so that's pretty schnazzy. Uh, the Tweak tool again, the Welcome, uh, looks like it's a lot of the uh, stuff from accessories and links to some system settings. Um, so, they recommend you run Gparted, but if I go ahead and open this up, or there it is, uh, it's just going to say it's unallocated because this is a virtual machine, and it's as if it's... Um, a brand new disk, update Arch Miners, uh, updating, so yeah, this does take a little bit of time, it's going to go and ping all the different servers and then pick the quickest one by default. If you've seen my uh, things you must do after installing Manjaro video, I go over that. Um, let's go ahead and run this. So let's run the Calamaris, I think is what they call it, which is the Arco Linux installer. So I'm going to slide this over and make myself a little bit smaller so we can kind of see what I'm doing here. All right, so welcome. Welcome to the installer. I'm going to be using American English. All right, so looks like we're picking our kernel. So kernel without any NVIDIA drivers. Uh, so they have, oh, so kernel LTS. Okay, so you really get to pick exactly what's going on. Um, I'm probably going to go with just this for now. Uh, you have the NVIDIA kernel, you have the AMD and Intel U code, that's awesome. Um, this should be good enough for me for now in the virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and click next. Communication, okay, so you get to completely kind of pick everything that's on your system right out of the get-go. Or A lot of these weren't on or weren't in this menu, so I think this is adding applications after the fact really easily. So, for example, I would go... Uh, Discord, I would go, uh, none of these really, maybe Zoom, so Discord and Zoom. One thing, shout out to Zoom, um, I'm not really a fan of what the company as a whole, but they give you a Linux installer straight off their website, you click download, it installs. They do better at providing software to Linux distributions than um, organizations or companies that produce solely Linux con or Linux software. It's great. It was the first time I was on the website and I clicked uh, install or download and it just installed it for uh, an Arch based system. So that was super cool that Zoom seems to care about the Linux community somewhat. So that's communication. Let's go ahead and go next. And from here we have development software. I'm not a developer, but what I do notice is Notepad QQ, which I just mentioned. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. Visual Code Studio is nice, but Notepad QQ is all I'm going to need there. Uh, office. So here is where we actually pick our office, uh, office suite. So a lot of these I don't even know, like these first couple I've never used before. Uh, fresh and still. So I'll probably go with the LibreOffice Fresh. 
Uh, only Office is uh, okay. Is it, did, I thought Only Office was, uh, they didn't develop that anymore, but I could be wrong. WPS Office, I don't like that. They make you get a, like a license key for a free so It's Their model is kind of silly. Uh, next, Multimedia. So here we have a lot more. Um, this is a very, very good uh, audio editing software. Um, Audacity, that's one I use. Going through here, they give you a lot of options. OBS Studio. I might not even have to install anything by the time I'm done with this. Spotify, which I just have on there because it's convenient, but I don't actually really use on my desktop machine. Internet, uh, Dropbox, FileZilla, Firefox, Adblock. They have a lot that you could go with. Google Chrome, KTorrent. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that's good because it came with uh, came with Firefox and the BitTorrent client, so. I'm good there. Theming. So I'm assuming this is XFCE themes. Let's just go with Breeze. Breeze is a pretty good theme. Um, next, graphics. We want... I don't really use any of these. I use GIMP. So we're going to skip this for now. Gaming. Let's see here. They have nothing I use. So that is more than fine. Actually, let's throw Gnome Chess on there for giggles. Next, Terminals. Uh, I use console generally because that's the KDE terminal. I'm not too familiar with any of the other ones, but that's something I do eventually want to familiarize myself with. Uh, Ranger is beautiful. It's the terminal-based file managing application. And I heard, well, Dolphin's the one I usually use, but I might as well try something else. Let's go with that one just because the name is cool purely for that reason. Uh, going down, these are utility software. So I'm not really recognizing any of these that I use. Uh, System D manager, that might be beneficial, but I'll worry about that later. Um, okay, even more applications. Wow, they don't hold back on you. So accessories, cheese, so that's for webcams, uh, fonts, mine as well, uh, get, G, uh, mine as well. Uh, fun password managers, privacy. They have a lot. They get you could download the Tor browser through this. That's super awesome. Um, Linux for kernel. So I selected the. Can I go back to that easily? No. Uh, I think I went with this one. I went with the non LTS kernel. Um, next, development applications. Uh, well, oh, there are there team applications, probably the applications that all the developers use, because a lot of these are communication applications. Location, okay, now we're into uh, something that's a little bit more familiar. Uh, Los Angeles is fine. This is fine. Uh, we're going to erase the entire disk with no swap. Um, I have 32 gigs of RAM, so even if this was on my hardware, I probably wouldn't even do swap. Because um, if I switch over to my uh, centered screen desktop, you can see down here, this is my uh, little RAM meter. If this gets anywhere in like the 60 to 70 range, I just restart my computer. It's not a big deal. Um, going back into Arco Linux, um, we're going to keep that. No swap. Next. Okay. Full name. So my full name is Brandon Hopkins. Brandon H. VirtualBox. Let's choose a password and not say it out loud because I've done that a couple different times. Uh, log in automatically, use same password. Next, and install. So we're rocking, we're rolling, we're installing. Uh, I selected a lot of crap that I might have to download and I don't have the best internet. So this might take a sec, so I will be back in just a second. Alrighty then, we are completely done with the installation process. You may now restart your new system and continue using or continue using the live environment. Let's go ahead and restart our system. And while it does that, I'm going to go into devices and just make sure the uh, optical drive is not plugged in anymore. Uh, let's do a reboot real quick just to make sure that that actually... Um, error here I'm just going machine reset reset 
All right, and we are booting in. Here is Arco Linux. So I'm just gonna hit enter to speed up the process. Make myself a little bit bigger. Whoop, there I am. And then let's move me over here while it boots. Okay, Arco Linux. And I'm gonna have to do the resolution thing again. Don't show this message again. And now we know it's real quick and easy. Just display, display. And the first thing I'm gonna do after I change this is actually go into their tweak tool and check that out because I always love it when distributions include their own software like that. It's really, really nice. So that was under accessories, not Manjaro, the Arco Linux tweak tool. Uh, so I just search tweak, Arco Linux tweak tool, enter my password. All right, let's check this thing out. Let's see what's going on. Um, so the current context of config auto start. So you can disable that. This is just your system startup stuff. Okay, so if I go here, desktop installer, that's pretty cool. Okay, ooh, and they give you quite a bit to choose from. Granted, you can get all of these just by going in the terminal, installing it, and then using your display manager to boot into it. But this is super, super nice. So I'm actually gonna do that in just a sec. Um, Grub themes, that's cool. So they got they make a lot of this stuff that would take a, some uh, some work really, really easy. So I can like apply this wallpaper to my Grub theme and next time I go in there, I should be able to see it. Um, what else do we got here? The H ad blocker, a system wide ad blocker. That's really nice. Light DM auto login. Since I set that in the dis uh, installer, that's uh, set. And you can change that here, desktop session. Okay, and this is the session that it's going to automatically boot into. You can see that Arco Linux actually comes with uh, OpenBox and i3 pre-installed. So you go ahead and switch to those right away without having to even install them. Uh, if I go over here, uh, NeoFetch Editor. I just did a video on this too. Uh, it's actually really, really easy to go and edit the NeoFetch configuration, but it is really cool that they give you the option for this. So since it's giving me that, I'm just going to assume that NeoFetch is pre-installed. So it opens up without me even typing it, which also in that video I showed you how to do. So it's really cool that it is assuming that is something people are going to want to do. So um, let's just uncheck some of these kind of so I can show. Um, use small, um, or there's one called underscore old, but uh, Arco might not have an old. So if I use small and I uncheck some of these, uh, just like this, hit apply, and then let's rerun NeoFetch. You can see it's the small and it will have a lot less information. So that's really cool that they actually included a uh, uh, GUI utility to be able to do that. Uh, let's close this out, move this over so my big head isn't blocking it. Uh, let's go over here, the Pac-Man config editor. So this is nice. Um, this is better than the uh, Manjaro settings. If I go ahead and let's jump into my center screen, which is right here. And if I go over here and just search Manjaro, Manjaro settings manager. Um, there's really not that much that Manjaro offers you. You have your local settings, languages, kernel, user accounts, time and date, keyboard and hardware config. I like the Manjaro settings, but this utility that Arco Linux is providing really makes that look like nothing. So in this Pac-Man config editor, you do have a lot of different options. If I go down here, um, terminal themes, so that's cool. Uh, you can completely change like the color schemes and everything. I'm, I'm gonna play more around with that later. That's something that's really cool. Uh, theme switcher, so these are changing themes for i3 or awesome, which are two uh, window managers. And ZHS themes, which I uh, do not use at the moment. So, the one thing I wanted to do, well there's a couple things I wanna do, but I want to see how easy it is through here to install a different desktop environment and um, you could all make a guess I'm going to install plasma uh, clear cache before reinstall not installed so let's install this you we can see down here it's downloading this might take a sec so I will be right back 
All right, it is completely done. And I just got a note down here, so I just want to see if they actually. Yeah, you get deep in. That's really cool. A lot of the times, deep in is kind of one of those that are uh, difficult to install after the fact. So uh, I would have tested that one out instead of KDE, but we're already rocking and rolling here. So let's go to. I believe it was the light dm auto login and that's not in there yet so i might need to restart but i'm not a hundred percent sure to get that um let's go ahead and reboot and see what we have going on so let's just go machine reset reset this machine and first we're gonna see if that yep cool that's the uh the grub uh, wallpaper i selected so we know that that completely works and we are, looks like we're booting into XFCE. Uh, so let's go back to that tweak tool and see now if I have that option to boot directly into uh, KDE. So wait for this to open. Go back over here. Desktop session, plasma, uh, auto login, apply settings. And I'm actually gonna uh, reboot the machine one more time just to see one that really snazzy uh, grub background again and two to see if it boots me properly into the KDE plasma desktop environment which at the moment at the moment is my preference but that may change soon just how my uh, desktop environment of choice may change uh, uh, we're having some uh, issues here I don't know. There's got to be a, a hot key to open the terminal, but I don't know it. Is it? Oh, thank heavens. Arco Linux or Arco. Yeah, Arco Linux tweak tool, maybe. Is that right? Uh, desktop installer. I don't trust that anymore. Um, <laughs> desktop session. Oh, it's i3. I didn't pick i3. I don't, I don't even know how to use i3. I said plasma. Apply settings. We're going to try this again. Mm, this might be i3 again. Yeah. It's not, though, because I could tell that this is the, uh, the theming for plasma. So maybe it's just an issue with KDE. Let's try something else. Let's try, let's try that deep in I talked about a second ago. So I'm gonna clear the cache too before reinstall. So install or before install. Um, I might need to reinstall KDE. I could have just uh, uh, had bad luck because I'm recording, but I will see in the future if that's the case. And if you did notice that I did anything wrong, cause I'm just, just trying things out. So if you notice that I did something wrong, please let me know down below. All right, so I just installed Deepin and rebooted. So let's see if we're just having a problem with uh, KDE or if it's a, a system-wide issue that I seem to be having. Failed to load kernel modules. Uh, okay, but this seems to be working. Um, normal mode, maybe. Do we got deepen? We do have deepen. I'm gonna have to change the resolution real quick. Okay, so we got into deepen, um, and it seems to be working pretty good, um, which is odd because usually KDE is the tool that is really easy or KDE Plasma is a very easy desktop environment to get running. So if you guys notice anything during the installation process or anything that I did wrong uh, to get KDE, please let me know. And this seems to be working. It's a little slow starting up, but it's Deepin. I, I personally wouldn't recommend the use of Deepin unless if you really like the appearance of it. Uh, the tweak tool is not loading. So... I can't really completely judge this experience because I'm not on actual physical hardware, but um, so far actually I'm impressed, especially with the installer. The uh, tweak tool is awesome. For the most part it worked good, 
But that the KDE thing really, uh, I don't know. I didn't like that too much. Uh, I was getting a uh, kernel module error when it was booting. So maybe I needed to pick the LTS kernel. I'm not exactly sure. Um, like I said, please let me know down below if you know something that I do not. Um, other than that, I do hope you enjoyed this. And I do help, hope that this uh, shows you a little bit of what Arco Linux has to offer. Um, seems to be a great distro. And if I do uh, proceed with this, I will be sure to let you guys know. Uh, other than that, I hope you all have a beautiful day. And uh, subscribe if you like this content whatsoever. Uh, like the video if you did. If you absolutely hated it, feel free to dislike it. Check me out on uh, Library, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. You can see it right below me. Uh, yeah, have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful day, and goodbye.